What's up, everybody? So, you know, every year I always do a Christmas-themed project of some sort, usually a Christmas ornament or ornaments or the Christmas tree of death up there. And this year is no different, except I've only got like four days until Christmas. So this is going to be a very quick kind of one day style build. And uh, you know what I thought the theme of 2024 was? Marble machines. There were so many cool marble machine builds that I saw this year that I thought I should make a little tiny marble machine Christmas ornament. So let's see if that's possible in four days. Let's go. So I found uh, these cool spheres at Michael's, the craft store. Um, you can probably get them other places, but it's a four inch sphere. Uh, I think they're actually 100 millimeter. The inside is 97, so I measured that with some calipers, and I'm gonna design for this. So this is the basic design. I'm kind of aiming for around a four millimeter ball, and this is just gonna sit inside of the uh, sphere. So I'm designing it around 97 millimeter diameter. I think I did 96.5 for this ring so it can kind of float, but it's just being held in there by these two brackets, but it can move around and the sphere itself, the uh, plastic sphere is what's gonna keep it in place. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna put little magnets in here in each one of these pockets and the balls are gonna fall into this little pocket at the bottom, grab onto the magnets, they're gonna bring them up, hit this and drop behind into uh, some type of track. This is just a wire track that I made first. So let's print this and uh, give it a try. These are tiny 1 8 inch by 1 8 inch, I believe, neodymium magnets. Guess I didn't need the uh, little vise after all. I'm gonna try out this uh, 298 to one metal gear motor. Let's uh, apply some power to this and see how it handles it. Hmm, might need some smaller wire connections to test this. Faster than I thought, let's see. So it needs the frame to uh, to be positioned properly. Let's see if I have a motor that has some wires on it already. Or I could just solder some on.
need to stop it from sticking to the back. <laughs> Okay, I need to drill a really, really tiny hole in this. And we'll see how that goes, because it might explode. Some of these plastics don't really like to be drilled. But uh, we'll give it a try. I've got a couple of them, so. Worked all right. Slightly bigger. So that screw holds the uh, the top of the frame so the bottom can still kind of swing and this ring needs to just kind of be hanging out there loose like that for now I'm just going to run the wires at the back ideally they'd all be contained inside but I don't think there's enough time to figure that out Okay, so some design changes I see. Uh, I need to block them from getting back here and mounting to the back of the wheel. Uh, so just a little ramp there. And maybe put one on the other side just because, but it doesn't seem to be an issue there. Um, but yeah, Let's keep it going. All right, a couple of small modifications. I added these little bumps here so that magnets don't attach to the back because when they do, they hit up here and they fly all around. It doesn't really work as well when they go up here. So really simple modification there. Everything else seems to be working really well. There were a couple of revisions. These ones were just basic ones for testing the motors. Then I thought, instead of doing the spiral, what if I printed each track? Uh, this was, Mm, not a good idea. It didn't work. I think you could get it to work. It's just a huge pain assembling it and uh, didn't look that great. So then I went back to the uh, spiral idea and to the uh, version that you see now. All right, this print finally finished. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting print. I decided to use the, uh, the support material, the PLA, but I don't like this at all. Look at all this waste. I hate this. Probably won't do that again, or I really need to like tune the settings. I used, just use the uh, default settings that are in uh, Bamboo Studio, and this definitely didn't need to be that big. All right, well, it was an experiment. Oh. Layer separation. Oh, I need to rethink this. Maybe I'll do it on my SLA printer. I really wanted this whole thing to be printable on anyone's FDM printer. So I think I need to rethink this a bit. Let's try this again.
Well, it's pretty messy. Don't know if I like it. Let's try it out. I don't like it. What I was trying to do was get like the sphere of the ornament, but you know, it'd be even cooler if it was like just a triangular, like a Christmas tree, and then everything was gray or red or something, and then this was green, and it was more steep, and it was just straight down, <clears throat> and then I could support just the inside the whole way down. I think that makes, makes way more sense. That's why we test. So I was having a hard time printing this sphere-shaped track, um, I thought it would be cool, but actually I don't really like the way it looks anyways. So as I mentioned, I switched it to a tree cone-shaped, and the benefits here are that all the supports uh, are on the inside. None go over top, except for one, but it's an easy one. So this is going to print way better, I hope. and. Uh, look better as well, I think. Well, that's coming off a lot easier. That may actually work. Way less waste too, I had to tweak the settings a bunch. So for the tiny steel marbles that I need for the, the marble machine, I'm gonna use the balls out of a 608, standard 608 size bearing. I think they're like 3.9 millimeters or something like that. So I'll show you how to take them out of this. So first you just pop these covers off I buy these bearings in bulk and I just like to have them around for different projects like this one. And you see these, these steel cages inside. You can bend these metal tabs up. Once you've bent enough of them up, you can pry the steel cage out one side and then the other side. Now you can see how they're arranged. They're sitting inside of a little channel in here. So to get them out, if you push them all to one side, then it frees up space for the uh, inner race to pop out. You just push it down, and then they're free. A bit covered in grease. So I'll have to clean them all. Now do it five more times. And when you're done, you end up with a bunch of clean, tiny steel balls. Really doesn't look like that many.
Okay, check it out. It's working, but I think the tree needs to be a little bit steeper because after a while the, the balls get a little bit magnetized and sometimes a couple will stick together and then not move down the tree ramp. But this amount is pretty good. I had this thing loaded up and there were like 40 going down at once. I'm going to print this one more time just to see if it improves it a little bit. I really wanted to make it uh, self-contained power, but I just didn't have enough time. So the wires come out of the back and I actually connect it on a uh, USB port. So let's plug that in. So you can see sometimes they get stuck. I could make this a bit steeper. I might have mentioned that before. But actually it's working really well right now. If you put a whole bunch in, then it will, um, you know, a whole bunch will become magnetized together because it's lifting a whole bunch of them at the same time. And uh, they'll get stuck on the ramp, which is why I was saying I might make it steeper. But this, this works well with this amount of um, balls. I like the way it looks. And you can see I've got some uh, crazy things going on here with the robot arm and a limb of a tree. So uh, if you want to see what's up there, go check out my main channel. The video is a lot of fun. I think you'll like it. And also, if you want to make this, obviously it's all open source. All the files are online and you can download them and you can modify them. And uh, I've got Instructables as well. So hope you enjoyed it. And everyone, thanks for watching and happy holidays.